Welcome back. Still wine the morning. Thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, well, you're still on time for the second conversation. You missed the first one. But not to worry, you can still get it on our YouTube channel at Y254. Make sure you follow us there. Uh, for now, we want to move to the entrepreneurship talk. And today we want to speak about the international education, especially uh, being that today is the International Day for Education. So uh, we want to get to know about the international education, the system, how it works, why is it better, if, it, if at all it's better than our education system, the CBC, the newly introduced uh, education system that is there. And for this we have Jane Francis uh, Nzisa Kialo. To help us with the conversation she is a professional tutor and a communication specialist jean karibu sana thank you so much good morning good morning so tell us what you do exactly i know i've introduced you but uh tutoring what exactly do you do oh um a tutor i teach uh, mathematics and chemistry mm -hmm. um i have a tuition center in runda it's a startup tuition center so we're growing day by day wow. yeah so we focus mm -hmm. on 844 we do um the international curriculum mm -hmm. that is um at excel in cambridge okay yeah amazing so okay. you do tutoring and you also mentioned to me that you teach uh high school no i used to teach at uh, in a high school i used to teach at a school in nairobi mm -hmm. but uh i resigned to focus more on the tutoring because mm -hmm. i have my own students uh, both locally and internationally in uk in us yeah. So you have a feel of both the education system, 844, yeah. and the international system? Yes, yes. Okay, and we want to get an understanding of this first. Let's just, just, let's just start with the international education system. How does it work? How different is it from the 844 system? Okay, um, there are quite a number of differences. First, starting uh, looking at the content. Uh, normally, for the international curriculum, it's widespread. Because um, from what I used to teach, I used to teach in uh, high school. So mm -hmm. the, the content, the work that I used to teach from Form 1 to Form 4, here it's distributed from Year 9 all the way to Year 13. So for my Year 13 students, they are doing, Year 12 and Year 13 are doing something that I used to teach in Form 4. Meaning the content that we teach here for four years, there it's taught for five years. That is from Year 9 to Year 13. So it's, the, uh, it's widespread mm -hmm. and it favors uh, students in the sense that if you look at this curriculum, the exam tends to be f favorable to all students. There's a question that, uh, let me call it, for the lack of a better term, weak students mm -hmm. will be able to answer, uh, meaning they will not get a zero, as you would expect in our 844. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in 844, the exam tends to be very um, broad and, and, and the questions tend to be a bit hard for the students. Mm -hmm. That is why you see so many students getting A's like what we saw in the previous case CSE. Okay. Yeah. Uh, would you compare it to now to uh, with our 844 starting, you know, how we start in pre-primary school uh, to get to class one, j before just before the CBC, because mm -hmm. at least people have an understanding of the 844 system really yes. well, yeah. and how uh, this other system works right from uh, kindergarten? Well, we start, normally, of course, there's the pre primary, mm -hmm. but uh, normally uh, it starts from year one to year six. That is the primary. Then you do the checkpoint, the primary checkpoint in year six. You get to grade seven, grade eight, where is the, where it's the junior secondary. Mm -hmm. You do an exam, another checkpoint exam in year nine, uh, before you get to year nine, sorry. Then there is now year 11 exam. That is the O-level exam. And mm -hmm. after doing the O-level exam, you get to go to the to, to L-levels. That is year 12 and year 13. So the O-levels, what can we compare to? Is it the it's KCSE? Form three. Yeah, it's 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 our normal KCSE, but it's uh, um, I can compare it to up to form three, form of three. Kenyan system. Yes. Okay. Well, not everything in form three, but mostly yes. What about the A levels now? The A levels now it's from four or from form four onwards. Mm -hmm. Though there are some. Uh, let me let me just talk a bit about what I teach. I teach math and chemistry. Mm -hmm. So if you look at mathematics, there are some units that we don't teach in 844, units that I did in campus, in university, in first year, in second year, but here I'm teaching them in year nine, in year 10, something like functions. Well, if I ask you what is functions, definitely Please don't. Be able to, <laughs> Please you'll don't. not be able to tell me what functions is, but yeah. we teach them. Something mm -hmm. like Venn diagrams, we don't teach them in high school, mm -hmm. but they are, they, are, they are taught in year 10. Okay. Meaning, as much as we say it is widespread, there's still content that we don't, is not included in our 844, but it is included in the, in the, in the international curriculum. All right. Yeah. What about the A-levels now? Uh, that's, you've said it's passed Form 4 now, is it? No, it's Form 4, form, <coughs> partly Form 3, mm -hmm. um, last, last topics, then Form 4 work, and then onwards. How, how long is the A-level? Um, basically, a year. One year? Yeah, because the exams are normally done in uh, May, June. 
There is mm -hmm. the May June exam. There is November December exam. After that, then they proceed to the university. Now they join the normal universities mm -hmm. or yeah. international universities. Well, yeah, any okay. universities. Yeah. Now, how do you compare now um, that system now to the CBC, the newly introduced uh, curriculum? Um, they are quite interrelated because um, CBC doesn't focus on on uh, the content graphs, the, the 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 ability of the student to 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 grasp what we are teaching in class, because that is what we were focusing in in eighty four in mm -hmm. eight four four. But CBC tends to focus on the general well being of a student, and that is uh, what the international curriculum does. If I tend to compare the two, uh, for the international curriculum, mm -hmm. you're able to choose subjects. You're you know? able to choose? Okay. Yeah, between 5 to 14 subjects. There is the technicals, there is mathematics, that is definitely. Then there is languages, the first language, second language, and a foreign language. Then there is uh, um, sciences, biology, chemistry, physics. Mm -hmm. if, your student, if you feel like your daughter or your son is, is not so much good in books, you know, there are two students who, you know, however much I will push them, there's a limit they will not pass. Mm. You, as a parent, you can tell that, yeah? So if you feel like your student uh, isn't that able in studies, you're able to, to, like, to choose from foundation or the higher. There's a foundation tier and there's a higher tier. Mm -hmm. Whereby foundation is very simple. Like, it's, it's favorable to the student. They tend to, they tend to be very simple exams. Uh, also, as much as you're choosing from foundation and higher, mm -hmm. there's also an option of either choosing the Edexcel, which is the Pearson, or the Cambridge. Okay, what's the difference between the two? The difference between the two is, uh, for me, uh, I, I tend to find Edexcel so simple. Reason being, mm -hmm. if you look at the paper, the year 11 paper, you have formulas, imagine. You're going into an exam and you you're given you the formulas. Have a formula, so Imagine. It's just for you to it's work it out. It's just for you to work it out and you're given marks. And a question like write 15% as a fraction, honestly speaking, simplify, wow. two, simplify two over four. And you're given a mark for that. Wow. Would you expect that in 844? Definitely no. I wish we had that. <laughs> <laughs> During my time at least. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, so uh, the difference is, is, is um, <coughs> one is done majorly in the UK, that is the Pearson. Mm -hmm. The other one is of course all over, the, the, that is the CIE, the Cambridge International Education. Okay. But they are all recognized worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for the Edexcel, they say yeah. it is simpler than the Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And for the Cambridge, there is the foundation tier and there is the higher tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sorry, there's the core and there's the extended. The core is simpler in Cambridge, the extended is a bit hard. Okay. Yeah, and uh, if you compare them to, uh, to 844, 844 is so much wide and very demanding and complex. And very complex. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why, if you find a student moving from 844 to Cambridge, they tend to do so, so, so well. I mean, they get A. Plus. Honestly speaking, so, but mm -hmm. uh, a student moving from the other side to 844, it's normally hectic. It's, it's a mountain. It's Lima. Tough. So basically, they work with the, your strengths uh, yeah. of in the international curricula, mm -hmm. just as it is in CBC. So now, what, what makes the international system? Because I believe that sh that's what you're vouching for yeah. in this um, instance. So what, what makes it better now than our CBC? Well, I wouldn't say it's better than CBC because, of course, mm. we haven't had a test of the CBC really. Okay. Well, in, in high school and the like, but it's growing. We are, we are trying to implement it as much as it's being uh, fought by people left, right and centre. Mm. But um, international curriculum tends to give you the global perspective, the global view. You're able to, to go to places, you're able to meet to meet different people, you're able to network with the who is who in the world. You're mm -hmm. able to go to different uh, places in the world. If you look at, for example, I will give you an example of NIS, Nairobi International School. Mm -hmm. The students went for a holiday in Europe sometimes back, I think two or, two or three months ago. Okay. You, you get to visit places that, honestly speaking, if you were are, you are in our case here, you no, would no, not be school. getting the yeah. chance to visit. Because mm -hmm. we have students in our schools who have never even set foot in, say, Mombasa or Kisumu or Masai Mara. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's just locally here. So in the international curriculum, you're able to, to, to travel the world, mm -hmm. you're able to meet uh, yeah. world class, um, I mean, you're able to meet people from all over the world, you're able to learn about what happens out there, not, not necessarily what is in Kenya or what we grow in Kenya in the, the history of Kenya, but you're able to learn about um, the Europeans and you're also able to meet different people from 
the world. Like, okay. if you in a class, you will have Koreans, you'll have Philippines, you'll have Italians, Israelis, and and the like. So you're yeah. able to interact with so many people. Okay. So it opens up your it mind. Opens up your mind. Yes. Again, changes the, your perception of the world because you're not confined in Kenya or in that village that you yes, are yes. brought up in and all that. Mm -hmm. So it gives you even more confidence because when you yeah. meet even. Me, when I was a kid, you know, when you meet such kids, you feel that they're more confident, you yeah. feel intimidated by them because, you know, they have seen the world, have experienced it. But again, there's a problem, or at least I had that was a problem. From my co-host, he was in an international school when he was younger, and he was being discriminated against because he was darker than the rest. So there's that, you know. Yeah, there's that, yeah, sure. There's that. So mm -hmm. how, how do you convince a parent to take their children to to such a school, you know, knowing that there's all colors and there's discrimination even by children themselves. You see, as a parent, you know what your kid wants or you know what you want for your kid, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're choosing schools, um, one thing that you need to know that is that you cannot protect your kid forever. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, need to, you need to tell them that they will be facing some of these things out there, not necessarily even in school. Even when you travel, when you go to look at South Africa, what is happening. Mm -hmm. yeah? So there's that racial discrimination that is happening all over the world. But uh, to protect your kid from that, you need to make sure that the schools that you take them, there are schools that tend to protect our, uh, our kids from such discrimination from the other students. Because you cannot overlook... Uh, 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 um, a student because of their skin color and favor the other one because they are white, mm -hmm. you know. So it's all a matter of how a school is run. Because for me, in my tuition center, mm -hmm. I would not let uh, I would not let a parent to feel like they are more superior than the than the other parent. You know, we're okay. all equal, yeah? yeah. So it is you now to know how to promote to promote some of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how was it for you? Uh, you now you are an entrepreneur. That's why we have you here. <laughs> so yeah. moving from the being employed in eight, you are employed in an eight for four system, yes, right? Yes. And now venturing into uh, your own practice, you have your own uh, tuition going on, and you're doing both uh, curriculums. Yeah. So how is it for you? Well, uh, before I moved, you know, you can't you can't venture into what you don't know. And I keep saying we learn every day. Mm -hmm. So the first time I heard about it is uh, a teacher, a colleague of mine called me and asked me, um, Jane, are you able to teach the international curriculum? I want to give you some students in South Sea. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I don't know anything about this, but I can try. So I went, I looked at the content and I was like, you know, I really, really need to get these books and, <laughs> and go through them because there's no way I can go and fumble in front of a student yeah. without knowing what to deliver. Mm -hmm. So I had to go sit down and look at it and do more research about it. Mm -hmm. And I learned about the Certificate of International Curriculum that is offered in uh, Riara University. And okay. There's another one in Catholic University. For Riara, I know they used to pay 36000 It's mm -hmm. just a certificate you do for three months and you do the exam and you get the certificate. Okay. For Catholic University, I cannot quote the exact amount, but um, it tends to give you a view of what you expect. You also need to to interact with more teachers because as a teacher, as a as a as a, as a tutor, we go to school to learn. Yeah, um, anyone can teach. I agree, but you cannot teach what you don't know. So as much as you've done education in the in the in the university that you did, because mm -hmm. you're you're supposed to, according to TSC, you're normally supposed to pick at least two subject, two teaching subjects. Mm -hmm. So when you pick your subjects. Um, you get to know what you're supposed to go and deliver to your student. Yeah. So for the other side, the content is the same, but you need that training to get to know how to handle these kids because they're not the same. You'll go to a class and the student is like, Miss, I don't feel like studying. I'm tired today. I want to go home. <laughs> okay. What will you tell them? You cannot force them, but you have to talk them through. You have to be nice to them. You have to like make them see the importance of them sitting and studying. You, you, you get to meet kids who are like, Miss, I don't know why my parents are wasting my time wow. paying teachers to come and, and, and teach me. I'm supposed to be playing my PS5 or something. Wow. <laughs> and you're there as a teacher and you're wondering, my goodness, where do I start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you, they have even different characters. Yeah, they are different characters. And these kids, most of these kids, they don't, honestly speaking, they don't like studying. Because they know if I get out here, mm -hmm. I mean, we have all cars, we have all types of cars. You have, um, I mean, everything that you need. You want to eat anything, you just tell your dad and he will send the driver. Okay. So, I mean, it's all about how we raise our kids. So, as, as much as I'm, advo I'm advocating for the international curriculum, you need to learn that 
your daughter or your son will go and meet other kids out there. And these kids are raised differently as much as it happens in our local schools, you know, mm -hmm. in the Kenya 84 schools and the CBC. Yeah. Okay. So you have to know you're exposing them to too much. Mm -hmm. um, like you might take your kid there and they will tell you, you know, I need, a, I need an iPhone. Yeah. Uh, Mom, can you drop me today? <laughs> oh, Mom, why do you have a small car? I mean, why don't you just talk to uh, the father yeah. of so and so? They have really nice cars. They can really help you get you a car at a cheaper <laughs> price. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it because happens. there's that peer pressure. It's peer pressure. There's a lot of peer pressure. I mean, when you take your kid there, just know that they 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 you are opening uh, them up to a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of peer pressure from these kids from the rich country uh, from the from the rich parents. Because the, mostly. It's it's if not people. oil, it's, it's so all, expensive. You know. That is actually one 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 thing about the IG. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive, very because a book for if you want to get a just a math book mm -hmm. normally goes for five thousand or six thousand the textbook center one textbook. Wow! And you need like f six or more. Tell yeah. me, how much will you spend on that? Well, that's quite something. And you know, currently parents are complaining about the the prices of books. I can imagine, imagine the international students, if it's raised to, to at up to 10,000, but though they will still they will purchase still, it. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's <laughs> not a big deal to them. They have the money. Okay, and do you have like um, students who have been sponsored to such schools and how do they cope? Honestly, um, we have students that have been sponsored. We have people, some of these, uh, let me call them foreigners. When they come to Kenya, mm -hmm. um, they tend to, 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 to get students. You might look for a student and you find maybe one, they are very bright and you want to take them to the best school. So the best school is, in our case, the, the international. international curriculum schools, either CBC, or, or no, not CBC, sorry, either, IG, either Edexal or Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So when you take them there, of course, it means you have to provide for them everything. You cannot take them to school and expect to, for, for them to fit in without all that they need. Okay. Yeah. So because they need to fit in with all the luxury. They have to fit in with all the luxury that is there. Okay. And I understand that they also go to school with, you know, phones and what yes. we are not allowed to go <laughs> to school with <laughs> in this other side. So how does that, um, you know, affect that? Does it affect the education? Because for us, we are being told you can't go to school. To, to uh, you know to school with a phone and if you are found with one you're being expelled for it especially in high school because one you'll be distracted one you know you there's so many things to it but uh, in the international system they are allowed why uh, the reason why we allow them in most cases you realize that some of these books um, mm -hmm. they, they tend to be very bulk uh, very heavy sorry and uh, to carry them mm -hmm. up and down it becomes a problem mm -hmm. so the books are shared in soft copy. I will give you an example of uh, Sabi's. Their books are, e they, they use e-books. Mm -hmm. The books are online. So for you to access them, you need to have an internet connection and a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop. Okay. Yeah. So some of these things, as much as we are protecting our kids from, mm -hmm. uh, from social media, from what is happening in TikTok and Instagram and all that, we still need to, 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 to use the digital era that is there. Because... This mm -hmm. is not the time that we used to, we used to carry books or we used to, 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 to use the hard copies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is also what happens in most, in, in the universities. Okay. If you're revising for something, definitely you'll go online and start searching. For yeah. Something. So uh, they're actually using the university standards. Yeah. To, they're using uh, the university cool. standards. And uh, also they tend to do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. If I give you an essay to write, um, uh, maybe, for example, I want you to explain to me about fractional distillation of liquefied air. I don't know whether you remember anything. <laughs> I, 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 know, I, know, I know the terms. <laughs> <laughs> but if I tell you to explain to me what it is, you'll definitely have to go back and look. Where mm. will you look? Like right now. Definitely you'll go online and start searching it up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we tend to encourage that uh, to prevent, uh, you know, carrying a lot of luggage, a lot of books, a lot of materials when you're going to school and when you're coming from school. Yeah. And also, we mm -hmm. encourage them to be, um, w you know, the, the, the education is student-based, meaning the students mo do more than the teachers do. It's not like in 844. When I was in 844, I used to write notes for my students. So you just read, it, read out the notes for yeah, them Yeah, I used to, to dictate notes to my students. Mm -hmm. When you tell them to write, they used to copy word to word. Why? Exactly. Because they're being spoon-fed, and it's a lot of work. And you see how our, 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 our siblings and relatives and friends suffer writing notes mm -hmm. but for the other case as much as they're writing the notes they um <coughs> the, it's not as much as 
it is on the other side. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what are some of the things from what you've seen that can be adapted to at least the CBC that we have now mm -hmm. without uh, increasing fees? Because, of course, we can't, <laughs> we can't afford <laughs> pay the, that the is same true. type of uh, yeah, <laughs> money that they, they do. But what can be adapted in, in our schools, in our public schools? Um, first thing I would really encourage okay uh, I would really encourage the spread out of the of the content that we deliver to students mm -hmm. you look at uh, I, I really feel for the students who just did their KCSE those kids did you they could do a whole year's work in just a few months mm -hmm. and as a teacher you're supposed to deliver you're supposed to make sure they understand you're supposed to make sure they they're able to answer KCSE right. questions mm -hmm. within that very short period. So I think uh, the CBC needs to be to have a widespread um, mode of you know mm -hmm. uh, delivering the content and also the exam setting. Please let's favor students who are not um, really blessed in you know education wise. Okay. Yeah. And do we have that in the international system? Uh, not for the students that are not uh, blessed educational wise, but we have students that are. Um, how do we call them? There's this condition. Is it ADHD? They have uh, low attention deficiency, something yes, to do with that. Yes. And we also have uh, children with mild autism mm -hmm. and some, you know, their attention is lower, it's but lower. they can still be integrated in normal schools. Mm -hmm. So do we have such systems that support such students in the international uh, system of education? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. But normally as a parent, you see, it's just like in the normal setup, what we, we've been experiencing around here. If you know your kid has autism, mm -hmm. it's actually very hard for you to get a teacher because there are not as many. But I'm glad that it is being, uh, I mean, some, it's, it's now being offered. We have people doing uh, special education. They're able to deal with autistic students. So mm -hmm. if you know you have a kid who has a problem, you need to get for them. What, what most parents do, they get for them tutors. A tutor who will be coming home and deal with the student step by step. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, as much as we would really, really uh, advocate for, you know, having schools that do that, because I honestly, I'm not sure whether we have one, but I know most people do get tutors mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Yeah. Right. But now, uh, what I will really encourage parents, if you look at what is happening, I'm sorry, I'm quoting this in South Sea, you mm -hmm. will meet somebody and they will tell you, you know what, I teach math, chemistry, physics, theory, geography, everything. And <laughs> when you go to the university, you're only supposed to do at least two teaching subjects. How are you able to teach six subjects so you're if you've only trained to do two? two. Exactly. So you're so overburdened. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not really overburdening or people are looking for ways of making money. So if as a parent you're not keen, you will get a quack. Somebody who will be pretending that they know, but they don't. Okay. Somebody who will pretend that they've been teaching this system, but they've never taught. They don't know what is being tested on, or the standards, or what they're supposed to teach the students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, we need to be careful. We need to be very Parents careful. need to be careful. Yeah. And then now, uh, moving to the higher education, uh, now from high school, at least in the international education system, or even from 844, now moving to the international t uh, education, if you want to study abroad in the international schools. So there's, there's some tests that you need to do for the English test. I know there's T-O-E-F-L, mm -hmm. and then there's the other one. Oh, I'm forgetting it. W why are they important for, for people to do them when you're going to study abroad, for those that want to pursue their education? Basically, is to show that you're up to standard. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's like, for instance, when you go to a university in Kenya, I, I don't want to name names. Mm -hmm. You go do your degree there and you want to go work abroad. They will tell you, you know what, I'm sorry, we don't recognize this university. We don't recognize this degree, so you have to go back to school. So the reason why they do those tests is to ensure that they are, they are up qualified. Yeah, they're up to standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you're coming from an international school uh, that you've studied in primary and high school, do they, uh, do, do they still need you to do the test? Normally, not really, because you can move from, let's say, uh, a school like Braiban, Garden Estate, or Braiban, any of the Braiban branches mm -hmm. in Kenya, and you go to any university in the world. Because the kind of education that they offer there, if it's Cambridge, if it's a Dexal, if it's IB, uh, you're able to, to fit in any world-class university out there. Because all the other students in, other, in the other countries are learning the same things. Okay. And that is why uh, at the start of the, of, of the session, I told you I have students 
in UK, in, in, in US, minus the, the different time zones, you're supposed to deliver to them. Whatever I'm teaching my students here is what I'm teaching my students out there. In the UK, so it's yeah. the same system. It's the same. Completely. And we get so many students, we get so many phone calls from, especially UK, because uh, most of the people in UK, when, when, mm -hmm. when you meet a client, they will tell you, I had to move from UK to Kenya because their education is not valued as Kenyans do value education. Or the kids, you cannot punish a student there because they will report you. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Kenya, you'll be strict with them, you'll be forcing them to, do, to, to really study. So when they get kids and they, they, they grow to the age of being teenagers, they tend to move from UK to Kenya. So that they can get serious So that they can study. get serious education. Okay. So in Kenya, actually, uh, I, can, I, can, I can really say our education system is somewhere. Quite recommendable. Yeah, quite recommendable. Well, right. um, it's quite recommendable, mm -hmm. but now when they're moving, you know they're not coming to do the Kenyan system, mostly. They're still doing they're their They're still system. doing their system, but now they're doing it in Kenya because us, we value education. Okay, yeah. quite interesting. Yeah. So, uh, what is the role of education in international development? Well, the role of education in international development, uh, for one, somebody would ask you, where did you go to school? Mm -hmm. To gain skills, to gain knowledge. Where will that take you? You'll get jobs, right? Where, okay, when you get a job, when you get employed by the top companies, uh, mm -hmm. what, will, what will that be? I mean, what advantage yeah. will that have, you know? So mm -hmm. we're able to move from, um, from the poverty level. It's, it, it, it's able to, like, to, um, to help us grow mm -hmm. and to, to, to prevent or to reduce the poverty that we tend to be having in most regions okay. in the country. And right, in and, in and, it, and in international school, do you cover, because I know they're very much exposed mm -hmm. topics like climate change, are they exposed to such uh, while still in school so that, because they're very proactive and you see them out there, you, you hear someone who came from Brayburn doing some, you know, excellent things out there. Mm -hmm. So is it because they're exposed to uh, things that are happening in the world at an early age and they're coming up with solutions, uh, you know, so that when they grow, they're very, you know, proactive? Yeah, normally these students tend to be exposed to a lot of stuff. Like I, I was talking to a student uh, yesterday and the kid was telling me about the SDGs. Honestly speaking, I knew about SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, oh, just yeah. the other day. I knew about Agenda 2063 just the other day. <laughs> I didn't know about it. And this you're learning from the students. Yeah, but them, mm -hmm. they're learning. Them, they're learning. Uh, they learn it in school. They, they, they tend to be taught about it and told, you know, uh, come up with something that you can do or they tend to compete in maybe promoting the SDGs or the Agenda 2063 mm -hmm. or Mapoto Protocol and the like. Okay. Yeah. Quite amazing. So we can ha also have that in our school at least. Yeah, we can. We can. I, I would really advocate for that. Mm -hmm. I would really, really advocate for us having the, um, some of these things that are happening out here being promoted in schools because you see, they mm -hmm. say charity starts at home. Yeah. If we're not, I'm not. If we are not teaching these kids about some of these things that are happening out here, when mm -hmm. will they learn? It's our role as yeah. parents and teachers to 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 to, to teach our students about what is happening out there apart from education mm -hmm. yeah okay talk about the um, assessment like how we assess our kcc uh, our examinations through the main exams kcc kcp how is it with the o levels and a levels um there's the checkpoint in year, na in year six sorry mm -hmm. that is the primary checkpoint Okay. Whereby after you do and you do well, you mm -hmm. go to year seven, year seven, year eight, you do another exam. That is the checkpoint exam that is in year nine. Uh, and then you go to high school, the senior secondary. So junior secondary is year seven, year eight. Mm -hmm. So these exams are like the, the, the international exams that tend to measure the level of the students. It's like our KCP. You see KCP, if you do KCPE and you do well, you're able to go to high school. Mm -hmm. And you cannot go to high school or to secondary school without a KCPE certificate. Yeah. So that is what happens here. You need to have, you need to do some of these checkpoint exams for you to know your level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Quite interesting. Well, similar at least. Yeah, it's similar. And then now with the KCSC mm -hmm. or in KCP, we have experienced some exam cheating. Even now, people are saying that there's been some cheating, but at least the CS has said that uh, has, uh, you know, refuted any claims. Uh -huh. So now with the international system, do you have cases of cheating or how has the system curbed that? Well, um, they tend to be very strict, especially with the cheating. Mm. Yeah, the punishment tends to be immense. 
So you wouldn't want your daughter or your son to go through that. And as, as a student also, if you know the kind of punishment that you'll go through, like uh, being banned from doing the exam, you will not engage in any cheating case. Mm -hmm. So they tend to be very strict. For our case, I think it's because uh, we have so many students, yeah. for one, that tend to do these national exams. Mm -hmm. And trying to manage all of them tends to be a problem. But in their case, you see the exam, you do the exam here, and it's, it's marked elsewhere. Not like in Kenya. You see, in Kenya, we are competing. Which school will do better? Which mm -hmm. school will perform better than the other one? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's about competition. But say it's about grading. It's about how will I perform? Will I get a B? Will I get an A? Will I get an A plus? Because for them, they have A plus. As we don't have A, a plus. Mm -hmm. For them, they have uh, F and as G. We as we don't have such stuff, you know. If you're getting an E, it's an E. The lowest grade we have is an E. Mm -hmm. or there's, there's a Y or an X and an exam is cancelled and, and all that. But for them, the, 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 the grading system is, is, is varied. So they tend to be, um, it's, it's, it's about how you're performing, not about how you're, compi or how you're competing. competing with your friend. Okay, so not yes. like what we're having here. Mm -hmm. But at least CBC is also now competency based more than yeah, you true, know, true. the performance and competition that is there. And you've talked about punishment. I thought uh, international students don't get punishment <laughs> as we used to <laughs> be beaten, but I know they're no, not beaten. Beating, so, no. Mm -hmm. no. What type of punishment do they get? Uh, you can be banned from doing the exam for maybe a period of a number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is, that is just one of them. The others, mm -hmm. it's like when you're in class, or no, of course, you know, according to the TSC, you're not supposed to send a student out of the class right now. That is mm -hmm. the rule that is there. If you're punishing a student, punish them when they're in class. No. So mm -hmm. if it's kneeling, let them kneel in class. If it's, you know, if, of course, not beating, but whatever kind of punishment you're giving, let them not miss the content that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. So that is what is there, what is, what is being encouraged. And that is what happens in all the other schools. All right. Yeah. And for someone, they, they, they might be wondering, for the, uh, you know, for the international schools, they charge a lot. So is it more of a business venture or is it knowledge base? Even for you now that you have your own <laughs> tuition, doing your own tuition as an uh, entrepreneur, how is it? It's actually, it has good money. <laughs> <laughs> it has that is the honesty of the matter. It depends with how much you charge. You know, if I tell you I will charge you 4,000 per lesson, it'll be like, okay, fine. That's, that's it. I know what I'm offering. So the amount that I'm charging is because I know my value. I know what I'm giving out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I cannot really say it's, um, it's business-based per se, mm -hmm. but um, the education is really, really good and it favors the student. And as a parent, it is now up to you to choose. If you know you can afford it, then go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you highly recommend that? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are your final final words as we come to a close on this? And also maybe you can give your handles if someone wants uh, your services and that is your camera. Oh, um, the best thing that you can do to yourself oh, as a student is to invest in academics. And for the parents, um, get to know the kind of education that you're giving your kid mm -hmm. and get to know what your kid needs. Please, uh, let, as parents, let's not make choices for our kids. As much as we are trying to, 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 uh, to tell them what is out there or the expectation that is out there, let's also give them the chance to choose what they want for their lives. Um, yes, so my handles, mm -hmm. um, I'm on Twitter as Jane underscore F Kialo and Instagram and Facebook as Nzisa Kialo. N-Z-I-S-A-A Kialo. Okay. Kialo is K-Y-A-L-O. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Kialo, for giving us such amazing insights on the international education system. Thank you. Uh, so that has been uh, Jen Francis and Zista uh, Kialo, who is a professional tutor of maths and chemistry and a communication specialist talking to us about international education. And now we are going to take a short break and then Bran Sakwa will be back with a yet interesting, very interesting conversation still on matters entrepreneurship. Uh, don't touch that dial.